Hey guys, if you enjoy the Drunken Peasants podcast, be sure to go to audibletrial.com forward slash Drunken Peasants to get your free audio book. They have books like The God Delusion or Mr. Mercedes by Stephen King. Also, 150,000 other titles to choose from. So be sure to check that out. It supports the show and you get a free audiobook in the process. So what the fuck do you have to lose? Tacos. Live from the frigid armpit of America, this is the Drunken Peasants Podcast with Ben and TJ, bringing you opinions of the news from an altered perspective. Fuck it! Hey man, you got a joint? Uh, no, not on me, man. I don't have facts to back this up. It'd be a lot cooler if you did. <laughs> what the fuck you talking about, atheist? You know it's okay. You're it's nothing, okay. KJ. You're garbage. Okay. I just want to no, no, be no, light. No, no, You're no, garbage. No, no, no. <laughs> and now, here are your hosts, Ben and TJ. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll do it live. Fuck it. Do it live. Fucking thing sucks. Welcome to the Drunken Peasants Podcast, where we DP the fuck out of the news. I'm and Ben. He's Ben. And I'm Mystical. And we also have everyone's favorite cast member here today, Scotty Cena. Scotty Cena. Oh yeah, he's magical. I bet he's pretty happy that Cena won. Cena! Yeah. Good old Cena. Fucking thing sucks. Shut up, Bill. Are we are we gonna talk about the bet you had yet, or do we have to wait on that? Uh, no, I think Scotty wants to wait until okay. the video. <clears throat> okay. We won't say anything about it then. Yeah. John Cena sucks. I had to tear TJ away from the new Manson album. Yeah, that's true. You did. Because <laughs> it leaked, and I was like, I'm just gonna stay home and listen to this over and over again. And you're like. No, nope. please do the show. And I'm like, fuck you, Ben. And then Ben chloroformed me and I woke up here. The new Manson album leaked and then TJ's penis leaked shortly after. Yes. No, no. The moment I heard it, it was, <laughs> I was just, it's like a sprinkler. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, yeah. I, I have, have stickiness going all down my <laughs> legs. My jeans have literally crusted into one position that they can't even move from. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. You truly are amazing. Yep. That's true. Yeah. I'm going to play this even though he's not here because I, I think this is pretty funny. Hey, Scotty. Fuck yo! Fuck yo! <laughs> oh, fuck yo! Yeah. Did you like that? Yeah. Okay. They didn't play the music though. Yeah, yeah. That that was one part about it that was lacking. If you if you guys make one of those yeah, and you send you it to us, yeah, you gotta play the music. At yeah. The end, I mean, that's what makes it. Yeah. You fail, sir. <laughs> you get nothing. So I guess we'll just get into the videos now. Okay. All right. That sounds like a plan, Ben. Let's do it. I'm just going to go into it because I, I love your reaction here. What? Oh, God, why? Why are you doing this to me, Ben? <laughs> hey, everyone, this is just like, proof that you? Ben hates me. Shh. <laughs> ben Another pretends addition. to be my friend, but then he makes me watch this <laughs> shit. So obviously... We know that's a lie. Of Illuminati media exposed. Uh, in today. Are, oh, there, th are there literally, there's literally like stars of David in the Hollywood sign. Yeah, yeah. I uh, the, the title of this video is Hollywood is run by Jews. Okay. And this is a Vigilant Christian video. I had no idea that the Vigilant Christian held these types of beliefs, but. Yeah. I mean, I knew he was yeah. crazy, but I didn't know he was also anti-Semitic. Yeah. Well, he'll he'll go into a little bit more detail here. So, mm. here we go. Today's video, I wanted to talk about something that you probably hear a lot of people say, which is that the Jews run Hollywood or that Jews run the world. 
Now, there's a little bit of truth to that, but I just wanted to make a video here to clarify that and to let all of you know, I'm going to be investigating this even deeper. So in oh the near God. future, you're going <laughs> to yes. hear me. We're all awaiting the results of your investigation. Yeah, yeah. His way of in investigating shit is like watching other videos on the internet and then drawing conclusions based on what he already believes anyway. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, uh, let me guess. Okay. Um... It is the Jews a little bit, but really it's the Illuminati and Satanists. Okay, I figured out the conclusion of your fucking investigation. Somehow I was able to yeah. ascertain that. I don't know. Maybe it's because every single other one of your videos is about that. Talk a lot about Zionism. And what Zionism is, is essentially fake Jews. They're pretending to be Jewish. Uh. Now, Hollywood, if you hear from a lot of insiders, they're going to say things like, you know, the Jews are, are all in the power positions and it's Jews that are running the show. Now, we need to go back to the, the Holy Jews. Scriptures to recognize something. In the book of Revelation, in chapter 2, verse 9 actually says, I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews, but are not. But are of the synagogue of Satan. So you see... The synagogue of Satan. It's funny, like, how well you know his arguments already. <laughs> well, you know? he make, it's the same every video. So basically, they're fake Jews. They're really Satan. Illuminati. The end. <laughs> Even in the Holy Scriptures, we have divine revelation from God that the synagogue of Satan, therefore that would be the satanic also an awesome Lucifer metal band name. Synagogue of Satan. We are synagogue of Satan. Jesus Christ. <laughs> in yeah. Illuminati Church is involved in pretending to be Jews, which mm. is a blasphemy. The Lord is blasphemy. viewing this. He sees it as blasphemy, but there are Satan followers who are masquerading themselves as Jewish people. So when we hear mm. things like the Jews are running the entertainment industry or the world, we can know that there are Satanists who are pretending to be Jews, mm. and that is blasphemy to God. It's like at the uh, end of a Scooby-Doo episode. <laughs> they capture the evil rabbi. Let's see who it really is. Oh, it's Satan. I would have got away with it if it weren't for your stinking goyim. <laughs> Pretty good. So man. put two and two together. It's who they are. The, the, the scriptures are here to give us insight that we wouldn't have if it wasn't for God's divine revelation in his holy word. Oh. So by God's divine revelation, we can see that there are Satanists who masquerade themselves as Jews. So when you hear things like mm. uh, the Jews are running the entertainment industry, what you're actually hearing is people... Uh, followers of Satan from the synagogue of Satan are masquerading themselves as <laughs> the chosen people of God to deceive the world. Wow. Now think about somehow without even seeing this video, I was able to figure out what his investigations would <laughs> conclude. I wonder how I, I did that. It's amazing of me. How did I figure that one out? You probably watched enough of his videos. Uh, yeah. It's considering that every single one of his videos is about how something that other people enjoy is satanic, including yoga. I mean, when, when is it? When is, when is he going to put out his video like yogurt is satanic? Why just why, don't stop at yoga? Go to yogurt too. I hate yogurt, even with strawberries. It's satanic. <laughs> It this Satan. way. If they really are from the church of Parking Satan, lots are the Satanic. synagogue of Satan, it means that they absolutely love their God, who Carousels. is the fallen one, They're Lucifer, the one who... Clocks, those are Satanic. Uh, trees, pretty sure those are from Satan. Um, I saw on... Uh, light bulbs. I saw on the Vigilant Christians Satanic. Facebook that he's now doing this full time. Like, he puts out... That's why he's been putting out videos, like, every day now. Yep. His ministry. They, they, they always call it a ministry. You ever notice that? His ministry is satanic. Like, like uh, even, <laughs> even Jesus Freak's channel back in the day, he called that a ministry. We're, minis we're ministry. Are we? Yeah. We're the in we're, no, we're the industrial band ministry. Though. Ministry. Yeah. <clears throat> but, uh... Yeah, they're... 
this you know i'm glad that he's able to make a living spewing utter bullshit it wouldn't he wouldn't be the first person so i remember when you first played his videos for me and you showed me like how popular he was i was like holy shit yeah there are people who are watching this and just like uh-huh uh-huh yep yep yeah that no, makes sense. No, mm, I'm not seeing any logical fallacies there. Nope. Mm, wow, that's fucking amazing. This guy knows what he's fucking talking about, man. Vegel and Crest and Mario, man. You've seen his videos? It'll blow your fucking mind, dude. Wow. Who promises knowledge and godhood. So, you know, they love this this god that they serve. And mm -hmm. consequently, because they love him so much, what's going to happen is they're going to hate God's chosen people, the Israelites, and those who are grafted in uh, to that spiritual nation. So, um, a really amazing way for them to kind of create a, a problem for Jews all across the world is to themselves masquerade as Jews. The funny thing is, is, you know, the vigilant Christian, you know, portrays himself as this devout Christian, but his fucking videos have very little to do with Christianity, really. They're all just conspiracy theory videos. I mean, like, if he really wanted to preach the word, why wouldn't he just read the Bible in his videos? Because it's more important that he shows us oh. how this evil satanic cabal is controlling our minds through mass media. Interesting. You know? That's more important? Well, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, that's what's really turning people away from God. That's why there's so many of these so-called atheists running around now. I see. It's because they've been brainwashed by this satanic propaganda. It's funny. Like, we thought we were atheists all this time when in reality we've been unintentionally worshiping Satan when yeah. we watch Family Guy. Or, yeah, even, you know, anything. anything, Pretty much anything. Like, is there anything on TV that he doesn't think is satanic? Come on. I don't know. He'd, he'd probably, like, watch reruns of Mr. Rogers and think it was satanic. Oh, this is satanic. <laughs> I just want to. I would like to see him like flipping channels. Oh, that's satanic. Oh, that one's Satan, 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 Satan. Oh, sucking the devil's cock. Yeah, I hope he the doesn't. Devil's pussy. Satan, Satan, Satan. I hope he doesn't pay for cable. <laughs> I'm sure he doesn't. And make a absolute blasphemy about what it means to be Jewish. You know, let, let's just say I was in the Crips and you're in the Bloods. Well, I want to make you look horrible. <laughs> what? Okay, I didn't see this analogy coming at all. <laughs> but let, let's hear what he has to say. Let's say I was in the Crips and you were in the Bloods. Okay. Right. I'm a Blood. You're a Crip. Gotcha. I'm going to change my bandana. I'm going to put on a red bandana. Then I'm going to go around acting like a fool. Everyone around. Hold on. Wait. You're. Are you <laughs> <laughs> then he's going to. Is, is this is this like a hypothetical scenario or is he talking about for real? He's going <laughs> to he's going to put a different color bandana on and act like a fool. Yeah, I see what he's saying. You know, found me is going to go. Hey, there's a blood. Look, he's got a red bandana. Am oh, really you know what? No, I just figured it no. out. This guy's an atheist, and he's pretending to be a Christian and acting like a fool to I make see. Christianity look bad. That's he what he's saying. Who? What guy? The vigilant Christian. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> that He's using this tactic that he's described. I see. That's interesting. I, see, I've, I figured it out. That's oh. my conspiracy theory. <laughs> we should make like a conspiracy theory video about how the vigilant Christian is actually an atheist. That's trying to make Christians look bad by claiming to be a Christian and then acting like a complete fucking idiot. Do Is it fair for me to even represent the rival gang that I'm supposedly representing? No, no obviously not. It's, it's going to give a misrepresentation. Very fair -minded, uh, usually. Either way, they're bad. <clears throat> it's a bad analogy. There's no good or bad. Yeah, it is. I like how, you know, he recorded this video. He probably sat around and wrote it down. He recorded it, edited it, rendered it, but still left the bad analogy in there for like, some reason. Well, that's a bad analogy. It's like, okay, then why am I even listening to it? Yeah, because... It's not like this is an like, extemporaneous, off-the-cuff kind of thing. Right, right. Kind of like what we do. If we if we misspeak or we say something that's just wrong, which we have... Yeah, or even just have like a bad analogy and we're sitting there like trying to make it work on camera like, oh, shit, this analogy sucks. Right. We can't edit that yeah, out but normally. This, but him, I mean, like... For, he's, he doesn't even appear on camera in like 99% of his videos. We're just looking at pictures of shit. It sounds to me like he at least outlines this stuff heavily. Yeah. So why why leave in an analogy that is by his own admission bad? 
or blood gang, but you it get just my feeds point. Into my conspiracy, this is all just man. to give you an illustration that that's what's going on. These synagogue of Satan followers synagogue um, Satan. are doing a deceptive tactic, which is to masquerade themselves as their opponent, as mm. the children of God, the chosen people, uh, the uh, Jewish Israel nation. Um, so be vigilant. I'm not going to go too much synagogue into depth. I'm going to start doing my own research, but. Uh, I just wanted to point that out, and I also get uh, a lot of comments from people, you know, who's really running the show uh, when it comes to the Illuminati. I truly believe the it is Illuminati. the synagogue of Satan, and uh, Zionism is a branch that they are definitely using. I of mean, the, the synagogue, synagogue of Satan, of Satan. Uh, will the manifest itself in different ways. It's Satan. in hiding. One of the tools of Satan is secrecy, uh, keeping things in the dark. So he Satan's doesn't come up secret synagogue. Right. That's one of the tools of Satan is secrecy, but obviously Satan isn't that good at being secretive because you're seeing all this shit everywhere. If it, if if one of their biggest tools is secrecy, why would they put it in fucking Family Guy? Right. <laughs> their biggest tool is secrecy, but they advertise it everywhere, according to him. Yep. Kind of like the tears. <laughs> yeah. The tears do that, too. That's why I always wanted to see. Vigil There's a circle. Christian. Tears. Yep. There's a triangle. Tears. Any any basic shape. There's tear. a rectangle. Tears. Yep. What shapes can we use that aren't related to tears? <laughs> you can use fucking polydecahedrons. I don't know. <clears throat> What's next? Here's another fan video. Oh, God. <laughs> hey, YouTube. This is uh, Daniel Faust from uh, Georgia State University. I just wanted to clear some things up with... Uh, I just wanted to clear some things up with the. Uh, he's gonna act like he doesn't know who you are. He's looking at. He's like, let me see. Some. Uh, uh, his name is. Uh, I'm making a video about him, but I couldn't remember what his name was. Uh, the amazing atheist. Atheist. I don't know. Anyway, he's wrong. <laughs> he's wrong, he's guys. Atheist. Uh, his. His video on I hate religion and Jesus too. Well, first off. But just based on this uh, topic, it really uh, the, 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 really That's all, good. folks. <laughs> okay. Oh, fuck. <laughs> this is uh, um, based uh, in, in with argumentation that is unnecessary. That uh, actually weakens his argument tremendously. Tremendous. Uh, what? This is one of the top things for argumentation is... First, he's going to explain argumentation. Yeah. Can we just move on to where you actually make your point and not sit there and assume that everyone's an idiot that doesn't know what argumentation is? The, the video is only like two and a half minutes long, so I don't... Under yeah, quit wasting time. To not criticize. So criticism weakens his argument. What? <laughs> Two... Yo, you really take the Bible out of uh, out of context. Um, it uh, this out is context. And, um, out of context. Uh, it's out of context. Um, y'all do not. culture. It wasn't where atheists had a culture. Yeah, we have a culture. So the, I took the Bible out of context. Yes, apparently <sighs> there there is a, a correct context for the Bible apparently, mm -hmm. and you didn't do it right. I did it wrong. Yep. Bible, you're doing it wrong. It's the context where you're you believe it, and you're not an atheist, right? It, that's the proper context, right? <laughs> the context where you're skeptical and question it, and ask if it really makes any sense. That's the wrong context to look at it from. Exactly. The God. proper context is believing it completely and fully, and thinking that it endorses whatever your worldview is. That's I the proper. Read context. the Bible as a whole. When y'all read the Bible as a whole, you. Y'all will really understand it better. Um, okay, read it as a whole. So, so you've sat down and read the whole fucking Bible, beginning right. to end in one sitting. I don't I know find that hard to believe. I don't know how. Well, he didn't say in one sitting. Okay, but you know, I mean, like, did it, I mean, you know, is anything really added to your understanding of the Bible stories when you like trudge through these tedious three-page-long genealogies of people, like? Ezekiel begat Samuel, and Samuel begat Thomas, and Thomas begat, you know, Job, and so on. And it just blah, da, 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 goes on and on and on and on and on. 
like that is really enhancing your like you have you have to have that or you just don't understand where the Bible's coming from. Read your Bible and do what it says. And another thing, like when, it, when the Bible is basically an anthology anyway, so saying that you have to read the whole thing to understand any part of it is really not even understanding how the Bible was put together or what it is. It's not like it was sat down and written by one author with one coherent message. These are multiple books with multiple authors over an extended period of time. And there's actually, di- there's a, you know, most of which started as like oral traditions or, you know, and then they've been edited by kings and dictators and changed around and which books will go in, which books right. won't. So, I mean, there's, it's, it's, you're saying that the Bible is like some coherent thing that needs absolutely to be read as a whole to understand any part of it is just rubbish. <laughs> Today, I want to clarify what Matthew 10 actually um, means. And, and, and based on my reading from it, this is what I have concluded. All right. So he's going to give you the correct context so you don't fuck up anymore, TJ. Thank God. You ignorant fuck. Thank God. Thank literal God. See, dude, you've, you've changed him already. Wow. You've turned him around. Mm. He's talking to his disciples to go out to preach the gospel, heal the sick, mm. uh, cleanse the lepers, and cast out demons. Cleanse the leopards? Now. <laughs> the deaf leopards. Yeah. He, he healed the deaf leopards. Maybe After he says again. this, then Jesus describes the people who might persecute and scourge the disciples for preaching the gospel and the other actions commanded by, commanded by Jesus that mm-hmm. I have just stated. Yeah. Now, the people he's describing in verses 34 to 39 are people who idolize worldly beings and things over God. Mm-hmm. Um. According to the Ten Commandments, idolizing is a sin. God punishes those who continue in sin that do not repent of that sin. Uh-huh. Um, the concept he is describing in verses 34 to 39 is idolizing. <clears throat> okay. This is why Jesus is sending them out to preach the gospel. Right. Um, because of God's unconditional love toward everyone, he shares the unconditional love and love. of God. <laughs> What Bible are you reading? Right. There's a lot of conditions to God's love. <laughs> God's love comes with a fucking wide array of conditions. Right. Like, don't eat the fucking fruit. I mean, like, if there, it was unconditional, the Bible would just, you just open it up and say, do what you want. Yep. <laughs> I love you anyway. That's not what it says. There's a whole host of fucking rules and, you know, ways that you should conduct yourself and how you should think and what you're allowed to think and how you should feel and what you're allowed to feel and so on and so forth. God's love is very conditional. Through the disciples. So I hope this helps clear some things up. No. Um, if people want to know more, um, comment. No more. That would and uh, peace out. If, if you people want to know more, more than what? You didn't even say anything. <laughs> he showed you, TJ. Yeah, he sure did. I've been shown. Now you know the correct context. I know everything now. It's all so obvious to me now. Why did I not see it before? Oh, we got another video from Stephen Molnir. Yeah, Stephen Molnir. Yeah. 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 So this is a, an excerpt from, I guess, his call in radio show. Yep. He, he was saying some pretty interesting things in it. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess we'll just play it and comment. And me, I, I despise my dad, by the way. I, I don't talk to him. I. This is a caller explaining. Daddy issues. Yep. Now he's going to explain to him. No, it's not your dad. It's your mom. It's that bitch that shoved you out of her womb. Don't answer phone calls. I don't do anything that has to do with him because he is so manipulative. <laughs> Daddy, no. <sighs> I just try to avoid. Well, yeah, but you I know, just, you say, why do women get such a break? But you're giving your mom a break, too. Or you've talked a lot more about anger with your dad than with your mom. Maybe it's because his I, dad. Well, hold on. Maybe it's because his dad is more of a dick than his mom. Right. Right. <laughs> that would. 
Why you take issue with the parent who's actually doing things rather than the other one, huh? I love how in Stephen Molnier's... Whatever the fuck is stupid. It's pronounced Molnier, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Whatever the fuck Stephen... Yeah, yeah. Fucking... What, he, he ha, what, I don't understand this fucking logic of his where women are responsible for men's behavior. It's like the, it's like this magic voodoo switch because if women wouldn't be attracted to assholes, there'd be no more assholes. Right. Like, what? <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? That's the weirdest psychopath? argument I've ever heard. Yeah, it's like, oh, you know, um, I don't know. I'm not even going to try to think of an analogy offhand, but it's just stupid for reasons that should be obvious to anyone with a functioning fucking brain. I have less anger with my mother because in the divorce... Bullshit. Bullshit! I don't know anything about your story, and I've parents. never even met either of these people you're talking about, but that's bullshit. Right. It's your mom's fault because she has a pussy. Don't you understand? It, she... she Sorry. Since reading, Sorry. I, I, no, 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 no. I'm Stephen Mignard! <laughs> it is my turn to speak, peasant. I will tell you how to feel. Until women are buying men rings, until women are asking men out, until women are earning a lot of money so that men can stay home with the kids. Hold on. Like, there are plenty of women who do do those things. Yeah, it, it may not be the majority, but look at look at the difference between now and just 50 years ago. Right, Exactly. Why can't people decide for themselves how they want to conduct themselves in relationships? Why do we have to let this asshole tell us how to live our lives? Like, women, they, they, men should do this, and women should do that, and that, and that. It's like, how about people should just do whatever makes them personally happy and content? And fuck you. How about that, you stupid fucking <laughs> retarded piece of fucking impronounceable shit? <laughs> Until men are putting makeup and fishnet stockings and high heels on. Well, some of us do I've, that anyway. I've done that. Yeah. I've worn makeup. I've, I've not done the fishnets, but I have worn a tutu. I've done the fishnets. Yep. On to attract women. Women are responsible for the creation of families. Because men ask women out, men make the proposals, and women say yes or fucking no. No, that's not true. Plenty of men have been asked out by women before. Yes. And and get to choose yes or no. That's true. He he makes these generalizations just based on, you know, what may be more common. No, no, it's like here's what he does. He reaches firmly into his own ass, <laughs> pulls out a piece of shit and says, "This is a brilliant idea. I'm going to share it with the world." People have contacted you and and said that you should debate this guy. <sighs> I you know, I, I must be doing something wrong if people think this is, like, the caliber of argument I right. need to be addressing. He's your intellectual equal. <laughs> TJ, I bet you can't go against this guy, dude. Stephen Miller. He's fucking awesome, man. You should see the stuff he says. It'll, like, make you think that you change the way you see the world, dude. He's fucking... You know, I used to think that people were responsible for their, their own actions and conduct... But he taught me that all asshole men are really the fault of women. That's their entire job. Yes or no? Put some false eyelashes on, push your tits up, and say yes or no. That's the fucking job. Yes yeah. or no? And that's the foundation of just about everything that goes on in the world, is the woman saying yes or no. Hell yeah, or ooh, here's a mace, right? Uh, that's... Yeah, can... What? Uh, some mace yeah I, I like how there's an arrow pointing at him that says was maced a lot yeah that was I funny. think that is what this is coming from this is, he's just butt hurt <laughs> oh my god you know if, if, if there was a slogan for his channel it should be the butt hurt is strong with this one because <laughs> everything he says like at least on this gender issue which is all I've ever really heard him talk about is like entirely just bitterness and just obvious fucking, you know, contempt for women because he's been rejected or feels rejected. So he's got to spout this complete and utter fucking nonsense. Patriarchy. Yeah. Patriarchy. That's, yeah. That's all it is. You know, and women, are, you know, every time I talk about women's responsibility for who they fuck and who they have children with, 
women are all like, it takes two to tango. Yeah. When I was shopping for an engagement ring, there weren't a lot of women in there. Oh, wow. There was no women in a jewelry store? He was shopping for an engagement ring, and there were no women in there. Yeah. What a... I hope that, that woman is no longer with him. You're right. That's all I could fucking say. It sounds to me like she's not. <laughs> <laughs> Quite possibly. Yeah, you I mean, by by his own fucking definition, he should never get laid again. You know, women shouldn't reproduce with assholes. I know. That's why that's the funny thing. It's like <laughs> you know, uh if if women were going for assholes, this would be like he would be fucking Don Juan. He'd be the fucking Casanova. They, they'd be, like, fucking clawing out each other's eyes to get to his dick. Can we... It was all... What? Can we go on? You want to go on? Yeah, I'm just... This is ridiculous. That's why we play it, TJ. It's beneath me. I mean, me. I could sit here and... It's it, beneath me. <laughs> Most of it is. <laughs> honestly. You want him literally beneath you. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> All right. Oh, God. They made another fucking video like this. What? How shitty would it be? Oh, is it this? If Santa oh, was God. a sexist at society. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck, Santa? This oh, my God. So how shitty would the world be if Santa was as sexist as society, TJ? Um, there is no Santa. Yeah, I, it's kind of like he's kind of like the patriarchy. They talk about him a lot, but he doesn't actually exist. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. He's the secret leader of the of the patriarchy. The, you know, even even just like the giddy little thrill I had the first time of seeing little girls curse is just gone. Like, can we stop this now? They've pretty much taken away the shock factor. Right, like the whole the whole thing is like we're going to shock you into fucking listening to what we have to say, but at this point the shock value of little girls cursing is gone. I don't care anymore. No one does. This is just weird. Please stop. This is bullshit. This is how society pays women. Get used to it. Women are paid 23% less with less opportunity to work. Girls should accept this. What the f you sexist jerk. Women who get A's are paid as much as guys who got C's in class. It seems women are valued less for their brains. And more for the shape of their ass. And grinch like politicians. We have to ruin our holiday. Not uh, one fucking Scrooge Republican voted for equal pay. The naughty use of the F word gets me bent out of joint. Well, wow. I'm just... <laughs> so, I mean, like... I love how they keep trotting out the wage gap shit, even though it's been demolished so many fucking times. Even that, even Ryan Whiney had to admit that the wage gap, although, you know, even if you do remove the variables, he, he said it's like, oh, it's like a 5% gap if you actually remove the other variables besides... Was that when know, he was on sex. here? Yeah, that was when he was on here. And Jacqueline's like, well, why don't you say 5% then? He's like, well, I don't even remember what his excuse was for why they don't. But, you know, it's like, oh, we, we, took the, we took the average salary of all men and the average salary of all women, and women are paid less, therefore there's this problem. But if you don't actually, like, adjust it for career and you don't adjust it for all of the different habits that women have in the workplace and you don't adjust it for the fact that it's mostly men doing the most dangerous jobs then, you know, yeah, that makes some sense. But um, when you take all of that out, then there's this big wage gap. It's like, well, women don't have the same work behaviors that men do at this point. For decades, nice women have been ignored making this point. So if you want to join society in treating us like bitches and ho-ho-hos, it won't uh. be just a fucking reindeer who has a red nose. To get treated equally, we shouldn't need balls. Are you learning anything from this? That's the Santa Claus. So what do girls want to find waiting for them under the tree? How about the fucking long overdue gift of equality? Shut up. Yeah, like I'm totally fucking down with that. That shit's legit. Whoa. Wow. I, I, just, I, 
I want to slap who sits down and writes this. I want to slap everyone involved with this, including the children. <laughs> Glad saying Nick isn't a sexist dick. Girls just want to have fun. Wap. Wap. Men of quality. Wap. Do not fear. Wap. Wap. This is what a feminist <laughs> Wap. Like. Wap. 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 Yeah. Yeah, sell t-shirts, you fucking shills. Right. You know, if you're going to sell t-shirts, just tell me you're t- selling t-shirts. Don't fucking pretend you're some fucking great campaign against fucking inequality or something. Yeah, and I think like I think this is the last one we're going to use unless unless they come out with one that's totally different, you know, and 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 kind of t- attacks it from a different side. I think we're done with these kind of videos. Yeah. Fuck that. Fuck hate. <laughs> <laughs> fuck fuck hate. Fuck fuck hate. Hashtag fuck fuck hate. I love hate. I hate love. By the way, uh, we're going to do something a little different than we did uh, during the last show. We're not going to take this video off this channel. So everyone that's watching now, if you like the show, feel free to hit the like button. It really helps out the video. Yeah. Uh, We're hoping to start live streaming from our actual Drunken Peasants channel again soon. But we got to get this fucking stupid strike removed from our account first. Yeah. So we're uh, we're in contact with uh, people at YouTube trying to get that resolved. So hopefully that won't be a problem for too much longer. But in the meantime, we're just going to have to do the shows here. Right. You know, whatever. Um, Anyway, what do we have here? Oh. It's our new favorite person in the world, and I'm not being sarcastic this time. What are you talking about? Welcome back oh, okay. to more of <laughs> Ask Alexis. Y'all, this is this is for the men. Uh, you know, I, it, it's late here. I was getting ready to go to bed. I'm a man. You know, I had just finished taping a show dealing with should I stay in a, you know, a dead end marriage, but I keep getting some damn emails from one of my boys. It's like one of my gay friends, one of my male friends, keep on emailing me on YouTube. And this is an urgent message to y'all men. He says it's just really off the damn chain. He want me to say something to y'all. Okay. So. I'm yeah. ready. Yeah. So one of her gay male friends wants her to deliver a message to all of us. To all men everywhere. Here it comes. I can't wait. Then you just come look close because I don't want the men, I don't want no women to hit this. So I'm sure, but if the, the gay men are saying it, then I'm sure the women probably are noticing this too. They just ain't uh-huh. telling y'all damn man. This boy told me to tell y'all, y'all need to wash under y'all damn nuts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, it doesn't matter for me. No matter how much I wash them, they still are pretty pungent. They still so. smell like balls. Yeah, you know, they're they're balls. They're really not going to smell too good. And like unless I just like get up every morning and pour a bunch of like perfume in a bowl and just like marinate my nuts in it for half an hour. <laughs> Short of that, I don't think anything else is going to deal with the problem. <clears throat> we need to get some sort of nut odor infomercial for commercial Fridays. Oh yeah. We, we should just invent that product. Right. Start with the black and white section where it's like, are you tired of your nuts smelling like fucking nuts? She can be our spokeswoman. We can get her on air. Get that nut stank gone. Yeah. <laughs> Around y'all damn nuts. And not, okay, I, camera girl ain't here. I, I got camera boy here today. So he said his nuts and shit, his ass don't stink. So he just is tripping him out because he ain't never had this problem. But this boy saying to tell y'all, if you, even if you do not get penetrated and have anal sex, <laughs> then you still have an obligation to lift your nut sack up and go all underneath the crack around the back of y'all nuts and all around, and then they said all around your dick too. They said the dick be stinking. <laughs> Well, you know, Dick's supposed to stink a little. I don't know what she's talking about. <laughs> it's part of the charm. Who wants to suck on a cleanly dick? I I, I would seriously love to talk to this woman. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you would get a word in edgewise. I think it would be like a, a Galen or Howard Bloom situation where it's <laughs> just like a nonstop barrage of talking and then occasionally you're like, yeah. Ha! Yeah. Uh-huh. See what you're saying. That's fine. <laughs> I like how the cameraman was laughing his ass off. 
Cause they say, especially if you got that foreskin around your dick, they say y'all don't be pulling that dick back to get all what they them old people call all that crust and that butter I'm around underneath your dick. <laughs> so they say the skin have all kind of grease and backed up funk and shit caked all around y'all dick. <laughs> Take care of that, men's. <laughs> Man, I didn't know y'all men was out here doing it like that. You putting y'all ass in somebody's face stinking or going up in somebody's ass stinking like that. That, that. that boy said, this shit got to stop. He said, y'all need to wash, okay, wash your nuts, pull your skin back around your dick, get all that hard caked up crust and dough and shit out of under your... <laughs> crust and dough. Right. Apparently underneath Sounds your like dick, a there's like a pizza. Yeah, it's like a bakery. <laughs> Dickhead and around that damn skin, that foreskin. They said he said pull it. I don't halfway. He said pull it all the way back and <laughs> scrape that shit off. And then he said when Dick y'all scraping. shit and wipe y'all ass with that toilet <laughs> tissue. He said be pieces of uh, particles of shit. <laughs> <laughs> This is just a hygiene video. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's educational. You know? This is she's teaching us about proper penis and ball hygiene. <laughs> I'm so glad I have her to they teach should, me. They should they should play this video in health class in high school. Let the kids know. Yep. And pieces of tissue and shit be caked around y'all asshole. So I don't, maybe y'all need to shave and cut that hair around y'all ass. And don't just depend on that toilet tissue to do the trick. You know, take y'all some down, no mass and gill, dust your ass out. Take some of them feminine wipes or some of them Clorox wipes or some. Clorox no. wipes. No, no, no. You That's should not, bad advice. You should not take Clorox wipes to your ass. No. You shouldn't even use them to clean that's, your skin or anything like that. That's not a good idea. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> so we can edit that part out when we show it to the health class. Y'all need to really spread y'all ass cheek and go around from your nuts to your butt. And really just, you know, put some soap and lava. Not no damn Camay and Dove, neither. Put some of that oxygen soap around there, that octagon soap, or that dial soap, or that light soap around y'all ass. And really wash that shit and go all the way up in the crack of y'all ass and clip that hair out around your asshole. And make sure you dig all up around your asshole to get all that shit that's packed up around it. Because they said that even though this boy told me, he said, even though y'all wipe y'all ass, your ass still be stinking when he get in the bed with you <laughs> I like how she can just keep going and going and going <laughs> it's she's yeah it's just nonstop. she just doesn't run out of things to say on this topic or any other I miss I miss her sidekick though in this video because she's just be like oh loud <laughs> <laughs> yeah we need that the si it's you know it's it's still good without the side right but <laughs> but her expressions do add another dimension to it no man talk about no another damn man like this boy just talked about y'all to me so he been putting pressure on me so damn bad about it i'm gonna put this up tonight it's sunday what february the 3rd 2008 that boy said y'all ass stank and y'all need to get this together before y'all bring y'all dick and nuts to go over there and go up in his butt and go to his house we'll be back with more ask alexis lord i didn't know it was like this nigga ass stinking off the damn chain and y'all talking about women stink pussy stink but this boy just said y'all Ass is motherfucking fuming, dude. <laughs> <laughs> fuming. Oh my god! A big green cloud trailing around. There's so many of her videos too. It's it's amazing. She's brilliant. Yep. Oh, here's here's that one guy that you really don't like, the captain. You, you know who captain? I'm talking about? No. Yeah the the guy that the first video we watched it. You know he was talking shit about mental illness. Oh, this guy. Yeah. Um, this is about how Ebola just proves Obama's hatred for America. Oh God! And then I, I guess these—he I mean, always does this. Yeah, I guess these are books that he's written. I don't know. These are the covers of books, <laughs> apparently. Oh God! Hey everybody, Captain here. Uh, I have wow, those are really hideous book Ebola covers. Because I don't again enjoy the decline. Don't really give a fuck. But I'm, I am going to point out one thing, and this is kind of like a hail mary pass to hope. You know, break through people's thinking. Get you think clearly here. Yeah, finally, the clarity <laughs> I've been seeking has killed. If you want to look at the most racist uh, living entity ever, Ebola has killed no white males. 
None. As far as I can tell, it uh, Nian Pham, she's uh, Asian. Uh, the guy from Liberia, obviously black man. And I think everyone who's been infected or killed has been predominantly black. Right? Now, of course, Ebola is not sentient. It, it is truly not racist. But what I want, especially all you minorities out there who love voting for Obama, you know, because he's your guy, you have to look at him not as your guy. Or he's our boy. Oh, look, he's, he's black. He's down with the race. He's down with the cause. You have to look at what his actions do. And you have to look at not what's coming out of his mouth, look at what his actions have done. Okay? He has brought and he has allowed and he's now still allowing with these fucking idiots at the CDC, the, the fucking dope that they got in charge of that thing, saying, well, we can't ban flights from Liberia because that'd be racist. Huh? This has nothing to do... It wouldn't... It, I don't think the, the yeah. justification is not that would be racist. The right. justification is that would be overkill and totally not necessary. Exactly. That's what the people at the CDC... No one said anything about, like, that's racist to do. I mean, well, maybe some people did. But that's not the argument against it. The argument against it is that that's not really necessary to take as a precaution at this point. ...do with race. This is, a, this is a deadly virus that will kill indiscriminately. And don't worry, it'll make the jump. But Whitey will get his in the end. Don't worry, it's not exclusively picking out females. It's not, you know, it's, it's really not that likely of a disease to make that jump to spread like wildfire through America. Right. Because the way that we live our, like, it's, it's a very hard disease to actually contract. Unless Ebola evolves to a point where it can be spread more easily it's really not that big of a threat to americans because the way that we live our lives is so different we you know if someone comes down with ebola we're not going to still have intimate contact with them on a daily basis the way that people in liberia would everybody go make out with that ebola patient over there well no it's like if someone in your family gets ebola there they still eat with that person. Mm -hmm. They still hang out with that person. There's no, there's no quarantine measures because they're just too poor to even fuck with that. Right. And they don't have clean drinking water and so on and so forth. But here in America where we have, uh, you know, we don't have, the be we don't have as good of an infrastructure as we should, but we have a more modern infrastructure than they have in a country like Liberia. So it's like... The, all these white people getting so, I mean, you know, no one's really freaking out about Ebola now, but right. a few months back when everyone was freaking out about Ebola, it was like, these people, you're just being idiots. You're being, you're afraid of, of something that's not even going to ever be, affect your life, chances are. Yeah. You know, literally thousands of people in America die every year from the flu. If you want to worry about a disease killing you or someone you know, worry about the fucking flu. Don't we worry don't even about know Ebola. what's in those flu vaccines, TJ. Oh, I do. It's mercury and mind control nanobots. It is. It is. It, it, it'll. It'll go everywhere. No. But I want to point out how it, so far, predominantly hurt people uh, that are minorities. It okay. has. In Africa, so they're not a minority. Yeah. You stupid <laughs> fuck. You incredibly stupid armchair fucking idiot. I. I. This guy. And his just ability to make these pronouncements based on no evidence and just shit on anything that ha like he, he like you ever notice like every video we've watched of his he's not only made these pronouncements that are based on shoddy evidence but he's outright been combative with science in every single video we've ever seen yes. of his. Yeah, I've noticed that. Like he just despises science, he despises rational inquiry, he despises having to have empirical evidence. His idea of um of a way of like the mentality that you should approach the world is just like here's how I feel and that's right and anything that goes against it must be wrong. Sound logic. He doesn't care. He does not care. The one thing Barack Obama cares about is being a goddamn politician and an ideologue. And a lot of people, I didn't know what an ideologue meant. And uh, <clears throat> I'll explain that to belittle be intelligence because I literally didn't know what it was until like five, six years ago. It means he's a zealot. It means nothing else matters to him than his religion. 
And you've ran into these people. You could say uh, radical Muslims are a perfect example. They don't care. They'll kill anyone because it's all for that crusade, that, that religion. Feminists, they don't care. They'll fuck up and ruin families with government policy. They don't care. It's all that religion. And Obama is an ideologue of the left. He wants to destroy this country. He hates the United States. He hates everyone that's in here. He hates success. He, hates, he wants to bring it down. What? Obama hates success. That's interesting. Considering that Obama himself is successful and that he basically just, I mean, like, I know that this video was obviously not made recently. It was probably made during the, the height of the Ebola right. scare, right? Uh, you know, in, you know, since that time, first of all, Obama didn't pr prosecute anyone on Wall Street. If Obama really hated success, then after the 2008 market crash, Obama would have prosecuted bankers. He would have prosecuted regulators. He would have prosecuted CEOs of companies that were involved in some of these like shady fucking dealings and shit. Obama didn't do any of that. And then just this past week, Obama basically uh, signed into action, or at least is not vetoing, this giant handout to corporations and this this basically saying that if these you know giant companies these too big to fail companies take big risks on the stock market and it doesn't pan out for them then the taxpayer is liable to fucking compensate them i mean like obama has been sucking wall street's dick from day one and you're gonna tell me this is some kind of radical leftist you're a moron if anyone, I mean, if anyone, you know, had the biggest advantage to destroy America as we know it, it would be the president. He hasn't done that great of a job destroying it. A lot of things are pretty much the same as they were before he took office. You know, if I like if, if I if you just took a magic pill that made you unaware of who the president is, I don't know if anyone would really have noticed a, a distinct change in the way America was pre and post Obama. Like I, I couldn't, if you just removed knowing that Obama was president from the equation, would you be able to tell the goddamn difference between Bush and Obama? No, no, no one could. Anyone who says they could is a fucking liar. Right? And I hate to sound so simplistic or conspiratorial, but look at his actions. And sadly, we're all on this boat together. This is the Titanic here. Ain't nobody escaping it. Right. So don't look at him. Take the, the glasses. Take but wait a minute. People, people did escape the Titanic. Yeah. Okay. Look at what his actions have. I, uh, oddly enough, it was the rich people. Yeah, <laughs> it was the, the wealthy people. Yeah, I went to a, a Titanic exhibit, and they had a list of all the passengers and who survived. And it was mostly, you know, the, the wealthy women and children but out of all the men on the ship, the wealthy men were spared the most. I think like 50% of the wealthier men yes. were saved or something like that. Yes. And it was like 80% of the wealthier women. You do know. Blacks and the poorer you got, the, the worse your chances got of surviving. Based on median income, you can use other measures. They haven't closed. They've gone down a little bit since Obama's been in charge. Right? You can, Go ahead. Blame it on, a, on, a, on a evil Republican Congress. Why, fine, Hold on. But no, no, wait. I'm not going to blame it on evil Republican Congress, but by your own admission, it's gone down a little bit. Does that really, if someone is actively trying to destroy the country, wouldn't it have gone down like, I don't know, a lot? <laughs> you know, like if you're the president and this is and his religion, destroying and, and America. His, yeah, like his, he's a zealot that just hungers for the destruction of America. Wouldn't things be like far worse than they are now? Like, wouldn't he? Like, it couldn't he pass measures that would take unemployment up to like thirty percent or something, and just like totally fuck everything up intentionally? Just, just go across the board and just sabotage America at every turn. Yeah, because you know he. You never know who's going to be the the next president. It's definitely not going to be Obama. That's like the only person you could be totally sure is not going to be the next president. You know. It could even be Ben. It could be. Well, actually, I'm not quite there yet. Got two more years. I could run for president. Woo! <laughs> ben for president. If you don't believe that, look at this. The Ebola thing, right? Okay. It, he is wedded to that ideology. 
He doesn't care about you. He doesn't care about me. He doesn't care about the color of your skin. He cares about socialism and leftism. That's what he is. He is. It, it's like a, what is leftism? I don't know. Okay. I'm trying to think of what else. I mean, a zealot ideologue. Look it up. All right. Look it so up. I just want ideologue. That is when you're a proponent of a particular idea. So basically, everyone. <laughs> yeah, such a bad term, right? Ideologue. <laughs> I want to point it out, maybe, you know, the death of many minorities under a horrible, horrible virus. They're not minorities. They're not fucking minorities, you idiot. <laughs> In Africa, where it's happening, they are the majority. You stupid, stupid, incredibly stupid fuck. Why? Why are you this dumb? Like, seriously, like, can you just... How did... How... I don't even understand how, like, people like this even get through the world and life. Like, you must have more intelligence when it comes to just clothing yourself and shoveling enough food inside your mouth to keep living... You must just be better at that than you are at actually forming articulate ideas that make sense and are cohesive and hold water. Time by preventing people from Liberia and other infected countries from coming over. They're doing the same thing in Africa. They're shutting down their borders. And go look it up. Okay, wait a minute. We we're no one is letting infected people into the U.S. unless it's under like strict supervision because they're coming back here because they're citizens in the first place to get treatment for Ebola here where there's better medical technology. They're not just letting any Ebola patient get on a plane like, oh, I have Ebola. Can I ride in this fucking uh, j you know, jet with everyone else? Sure, hop on board. Obama doesn't care. <laughs> the president said it's fine. The majority of Africa is minorities. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty soon you I go to a restaurant in America, there's like... Uh, you know, they used to have smoking and non-smoking section. Yeah. Now it's the Ebola and non-Ebola section. It's like... <laughs> oh. This is the, one of the rare times he's left himself exposed and, and let you peek behind the curtain and see what kind of a guy he is. This guy is a fucking... You can't even call him evil because evil is indicates like some kind of intelligence or willingness or psychoticness. This guy is just a, an arrogant, selfish fuck. He, he doesn't... Whoa, 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 whoa. Arrogance. Yeah. I mean, uh, like, I don't know. I, I can't say okay. this guy's selfish. I don't know anything about okay, that. Okay, we can but. say he's... I think we can say he's selfish because he's a fucking extreme conservative libertarian. And yes. that's like a philosophy based on selfishness, almost by its own admission. I mean, one of the architects of what became libertarianism, even though she spurned it once it actually came into existence, was Ayn Rand, who wrote a book entitled The Virtue of Selfishness. And that's not just a clever, cute title. She literally says that selfishness is a good thing. So, I mean, that's like, and she's one of the architects of their ideology. So is he, I mean, you know, I think that he is probably incredibly selfish. And we know for a fact, <laughs> for a fact that he's arrogant, not to say I'm humble or something, but. Care about you. He cares about Barack Obama. That's, it's an ego for him. An egomaniac, I guess, would be a, a good uh, psychological assessment. In any case, that's all I'm going to say about Ebola. I mean, it's here. Guess you know, get, get to deal with it now. We didn't Did you notice that uh, his Ebola video was awful light on facts about Ebola? Right. <laughs> Except for the fact that it's all minorities that have it. Apparently. Yeah, all those minorities over in those other countries where they're the majority. Yep. It's almost like that episode of South Park where the Car water park. One? Yeah. <laughs> Too yeah. many minorities. At the water park. And it's like he doesn't understand that if all white people are gone, then the, th he's the minority. Right. So even Kyle even points it out to him. He's like, what are you talking about? Yep. This guy is just like Cartman all grown up. <laughs> all right. Only not as smart. Let's see. This video, I don't know if we'll have so much to say about it as much as we'll probably just laugh at it because it's ridiculous. Okay. This pastor has a, an incredible power. <laughs> I think I know what you're going to show. Russia, yeah. Are you ready? You want something? Take it! <laughs> That's your Take you it! Want it! You want it? The Take force it! is strong with this one. <laughs> you want it tonight? Take it! Oh. oh Take it! <laughs> <laughs> 
seriously, seriously. Like, uh, how can these people... These people know that they're making themselves fall over. How can they keep coming to this church and believing this shit? It's like one of, it's like one of those things where everyone knows it's bullshit, but no one can say that it's bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like everyone, everyone just agrees to pretend that a lie is true because, you know, uh, it's it's like they actually um. I have a friend who uh, who was raised Catholic, and uh, they're supposed to be. There's something that he was supposed to do when he was like 13 or so. Confirmation, confirmation right? Yeah. And part of the confirmation in the at least in the southern version of the Catholic Church is you're there, there's there's supposed to be some moment where you're like overwhelmed by the power of, of God or the Holy Spirit or whatever, and you're supposed to fall back. Yeah, I don't remember doing that, but possibly I've I've repressed a lot of the memories. <laughs> well, anyway, he <laughs> had to do that. And, um, you know, everyone has to do it. And he stood, you know, everyone was like, oh, the power of God, oh, the power of God. And uh, he, he went there, and he was a little bit more honest than other people who were just faking it to get it over with. And he kind of stood there for 15 minutes waiting for the power of God to arrive. And then finally he's just like, fuck it. I guess I'll just, <laughs> I guess just to be over, done, over and done with it, I'll just, oh, the power of God. Yeah, over, you know. I'm bored. Let's get this over <laughs> with. It's like, fuck this. Power of God. Oh, I feel it. Wow. Amazing. I fell. So powerful. You hear how he's yelling low, like, take it. Someone, someone should make a uh, hey Scotty take it <laughs> like that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, take it, take <laughs> it, take it! Of the power of the Holy Ghost, the anointing of the Holy Ghost. You want it? You want it? Take it! That's the power of the Holy Ghost. You want it tonight? You want it? Take it! That's the power of the Holy Ghost! Okay, okay. Yeah, what the fuck? I would leave that very moment, especially if someone fell on top of me. I'd be pretty pissed. Take it! Yep. That's the power of the Holy Ghost! I wonder if you, like, if you got injured here, if you could sue the pastor for using his powers to injure you. <laughs> yeah. Here's a video uh, that uh, it's called A Challenge to Atheists. Finally, I've been looking for a good challenge. Hey guys, so um, my name's Steven. Uh, no, it's not. You're a liar. I wanted to make this video to talk about a topic that I've thought about and I just wanted to get my thoughts out there, make a video about it, uh, vent, Thanks. and maybe get some reactions about it. So here we go. Uh, there's going to be basically a challenge to a lot of atheists because they think that you know they have a solid answer they think they're reasonable and say their thinking is based on logic and evidence uh -huh. especially the people who you know they say evolution is true or whatever uh -huh. and they defeat uh, many religious people with it because uh -huh. they say that the religious people don't have any evidence whereas the people who believe in evolution do have evidence and that somehow uh -huh validates their belief whereas the religious people don't have the validation so what my point is going to be that Woo. atheistic mm. views which is the view that there's no god and the view that they have evidence uh. e even evolution i'm, I'm going to challenge evolution okay even that view so in challenging evolution i'm challenging science right so even that view uh. that evolu evolution is true versus like religion not being true mm. if we're going to talk about truth <laughs> wow i say yeah. they're both equally true get so, to the fucking point get um, to the point so evolution is just as true as like um wow anything so right evolution is just as true as anything so anyway. things that are true and things that are not true it's all the same right Truth, truth is just whatever you want it to be. Is there God, uh, Christian God, whatever, right? Do a, let's just say spaghetti monster because I know you guys will want to try to say that to ridicule the argument. So I'll just assume the worst opponent. So basically, why? Have you been touched by his noodly appendage, sir? <laughs> Convert to pastafarianism. Or evolution would not be stronger than, than any of these other ridiculous things 
the ridiculous ideas, right? Okay, uh, I'm done with them. Yeah, I is... even I when I get bored, that's like wow. Yeah, I and like if you're gonna have like all these digressions into nowhere, at least make them fun. Yes, you know, at least have a fun digression. That's like an interesting aside, not just like fumbling around trying to actually clumsily get to what you're trying to say, you know? Here's here's another video that's kind of the same. It's like the kind of guy that can't get it, that, you know, can't find the pussy for like five minutes and just stabs <laughs> his girlfriend in the pelvis a few times. God damn it, where is it? This video is kind of similar to the video we were watching before this one. touched by the holy spirit actually i think he's having a seizure bob yeah what the fuck like this is how people spend their su their sunday afternoon the saddest thing is the kid that's kind of like staring at this oh the kid in the like, background there near the piano yeah they like kind of staring at it with like fear and skepticism yeah. just like uh what <laughs> yeah, he's looking at them like uh Okay. The things people do for entertainment. America. Yep. Fuck yeah. This goes on for like five minutes, too. Wow. Yeah. Yep. The power of Christ compels you. The power of Christ compels you. It does kind of look like the an exorcism. The power of Christ compels you. The power of Christ compels you. They say that like 25 times in that movie. In The Exorcist? Yeah. Yeah. He goes on for a while. Power of Christ compels you. Your mama sucks cock in hell. Oh, uh, when they did a parody of that on SNL in the 70s, she said, your mother knit socks that smell. <laughs> and Richard Pryor was the priest and he's like you don't talk about my mama <laughs> it's hilarious that's funny this video is entitled atheism is dangerous that's true hello ladies and gentlemen thank you for listening to the value of truth ministries i'm brian price it's today another I have a ministry yes with me today the amazing atheist sweet as you can see there i am it looks just like you yep that's me it's you i remember doing this show paper plate face yeah, well, that's my true form. He's pretty amazing. Um, he's got some eyebrows going down like he's mad. That's because he is. He's always mad. And he's got so a big angry. smile like he's laughing. Uh, that's because he is always laughing. <clears throat> if you Wait, combine the... So I'm always mad and I'm always laughing. <clears throat> You're always mad and laughing. Because laughing is a normal reaction to being mad. <laughs> yeah. Two... You have a crazed lunatic. Right. Um, and that's exactly what he is, in my opinion. Yep, um, that's me. But other than that, he's quite amazing. Lunatic his jokes fringe. are quite funny. Um, yeah, Dean Ambrose. Don't you think so? Amazing atheist. Yes, I do. <laughs> 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 yes. Me and this guy I are friends. Yeah, yeah, you guys are hanging out laughing in this we're video. We're buddies. Yep. He likes me, even though I'm a lunatic. He's quite funny, actually. He's the one talking to a paper plate, but I'm the lunatic. So, I wanted to talk to you today about why atheism is dangerous. Why don't you just tack yes, it up on the friends, wall? It is dangerous. If you don't believe me, just do your research. Yeah, okay. Number one, it deceives people to believe a lie. You're thinking of religion. Oh, by the way. Right, right. It deceives people to believe a lie. Yeah, it's religion you're thinking I of, I mean, actually. it was such a strong lie that back in the day they would kill people who didn't believe in it. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, atheism is always lying to people. Yep. 
How can a- atheism literally? It can't lie. It's ju- it's just a statement of I don't believe in God. Yeah, I don't believe in it. That's not a lie. That's yeah. Because I that, really that's, don't. That's really true. I don't believe in God. I don't. I don't. I find the idea of God to be kind of silly. That's true. There's no you. You can't. You're basically saying that I'm lying about my feet. Like really, I believe there is a God, but I just say I don't for some invisible gain. It's religion that actually makes statements and claims like there's a God and he has these rules and he did these miracles and if you don't believe in him, you're going to burn in hell for all eternity and so on and so forth. Like Those are claims that are difficult to prove. When I say I'm an atheist, I'm not saying anything other than I don't believe in God. So I don't know. Liar. How that's a, I don't know. That's a lie. You liar, the amazing liar. If you don't believe me? Just watch this guy. He's quite dangerous. Right. I'll explain why in just a minute. But please do. It deceives people to believe a lie, my friends. If you believe that there's no God. You are believing a lie. Okay. The Bible says in Psalms 14, 1, the fool. It's not that they believe that there's no God. It's that they don't believe I love that how there he's, is a God. He's going to say, <laughs> in order to prove God, he's going to quote the Bible. That's very interesting. No way. And he's going to say that the same tired, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. It's like, hey, atheist, according to the book, you don't believe. You're idiots. It's like, okay, you realize that's meaningless to me, right? has said in his heart there is no God now uh, if we're telling people that nothing made them that would be like me saying that nothing made this board here as simple of actually we, creation as this we have we know that that board was manufactured by human beings that's that's prior knowledge we understand that it's not the same thing to say that nothing made you. And, you know, I don't think any atheist would say that nothing made people. We believe that people arose through naturalistic processes that can be explained by the laws of nature. And if you're going to ask where did nature come from, you have to realize that prior to the beginning of the universe, there were no laws of nature. And, you know, it, it is kind of a mystifying and difficult question how did this all begin? But just because it's mystifying and perplexing and difficult doesn't mean that we automatically have to insert God into the equation to make it make sense. We shouldn't just settle for a fairy tale because we don't understand the truth fully. Clearly, you can see a beaver did not create this thing. An ant or an antelope, for that matter, um, did not make this thing. Uh, uh-huh. A squid didn't make this. Got it. But a man, flesh and blood. How do you know it wasn't a woman, sexist? Yeah. <laughs> Misogyny. Patriarchy. Patriarchy. Created this. Patriarchy. Okay? Now, to believe that there's no God would say that something as simple as this turned into something as complex as me. It just evolved uh-huh. and sprouted arms and legs. That is as silly of a teaching as atheism is. No. Uh, combined with evolution. <clears throat> right. Now, study some science. Number two, it has caused more deaths than religion. No. Wow. Not true. <laughs> Not even close to true. If he, you know, he's probably going to go like the Stalin route he's here. A, he may even claim Hitler. Yeah, he probably will claim Hitler, even though that's ridiculous. Right. Uh, How is that possible, you may ask? Well, if you take the Crusades and combine all the deaths over hundreds of years from the Crusades and compare them with just the dictatorship of Joseph Stalin, who yep, was an atheist, there's Stalin. by the way, um, and compared the deaths that he caused by his atheistic regime, you'll see that only about 5 million people died from the Crusades as opposed to 23 plus million from his dictatorship. Right. And Which was all in the name of atheism. Right. There was no political philosophy behind it. It was all just atheism. There is no God, so I'm going to kill 23 million people. That's how it worked. Whereas, on the other hand, the Crusades was totally about religion. No, no, the Crusades were... uh, That was just a big misunderstanding. Oh, I see. 
that was probably atheists in disguise pretending to be religious to make religious people look bad. <laughs> Over the Soviet Union, in which atheism was the state religion, so to speak. Uh, it was a non-religion. It was the, the accepted uh, moral belief system that they had instilled in their society. It's what they chose, and that's what they taught their people, that there was no God, and so forth. <clears throat> but it caused more deaths in just that little bit of time frame in the 19th century as opposed to centuries and centuries of the Crusades. Okay. I and love how also he acts like the Crusades are the only time that religion has got out of hand and killed people. It like, is, right? We're not going to talk about the Spanish Inquisition. We're not going to talk about witch burning. We're not going to talk about so-called sinners being stoned to death. What about we're all the non-Christian... We're not going to talk about all the wars that have been fought for religion prior to the Christian faith. We're not going to talk about all of human history. We're not we're not going to talk about the ways that religion has actually been an impediment to, you know, life-saving technologies or anything like that. We're we're only going to talk about the Crusades versus Stalin. You know, to claim that Stalin killed people in the name of atheism is ludicrous. Communism was basically a political philosophy that, uh, well, at least Stalin's version, the the Soviet version of communism, basically replaced, you know, the divinity of gods with the supposed divinity of the state. You know, it, they weren't. They wanted your faith to be statism. They wanted your faith to be our great leader. <clears throat> So it wasn't like they, it wasn't like this was, this had the, the atheism they're talking about had very little to do with most of the reason, most of the reason that people contemporarily come to atheism, which is I find the evidence for God lacking. Theirs was more like, don't waste your time worshiping God. You should be worshiping us. It was it, almost like they viewed religion as competition for their mind control of the citizens. Honestly, it sends people to hell. Uh, how does it send people to hell? Well, if we're telling people, pretty sure why, that God like, sends people to right. hell within the context of your religion. God decides who goes to hell and who doesn't. Right. I mean, it even says. I mean, you know, it even says in the Bible at several points that God Himself chooses who's going to be saved and who's not going to be saved. So atheism, quote unquote, if you believe in the Bible, has no power to go around deciding who's going to be saved and who's not. Number one, then they're believing falsely, and they're choosing. People are choosing to live however they please without any fear of consequence. And then when they wake up and they're dead, when they're what? When they wake up, and they they're wake dead. up and they're dead. That's an interesting. And when they wake moment. up in hell, they realize, oh my goodness, oh, okay. there is a God. Wake up oh, in hell. Oh my goodness, my sin does have consequence, and oh my goodness, the gospel is true. So it sends people to hell, and people like the amazing atheist are no better than Joseph Stalin, who was a murderer. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay, video over. <laughs> you know, that's it's over. There's no, there, We don't need to hear anymore. I want to hear more. No, no, no. It's not. There's, there's nothing he's going to say that's going to top that. That's the perfect closure point. Amazing Atheist is as bad as Stalin. The end. Because you help people go to hell. Has nothing to do with God sending them there. Creating hell. Yeah, or creating hell in the first place. Right. Yeah. It's all me. Or creating us with a human nature that sends us to hell in the first place. Mm-hmm. 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 Dick will make you slap someone. Mm-hmm. All right. So before we move on to the next video, you want to do the shout-outs to our patrons? Sure. Our you $25 wanna, you wanna, patrons. You want to set that up? It's right here. No, I meant, like, set up what I'm what we're doing here. Oh, okay. Uh, the the following people uh, donated twenty five dollars to our Patreon uh, last month. This is uh, Michael Logan. What does that say? Haiti? I would say had. Ha had had someone <laughs> Snyder. It's a h a d d e. So I don't know how this pronounced, but I threw a few of them out there. <laughs> Jake Farrell, Adam. Macaskill, Tristan Crockett, Ripley. So 
the, the what was that Sigourney Weaver? Yeah, on the Nostromo or something like that. Eric Maruri, is yeah. that what that says? Maruri, yeah. Jasper BB and Morgan, thank you all for your twenty five dollar. Uh, patronage to our Patreon and if you guys out there listening to this right now want to help support our show on Patreon the uh, URL is of course patreon.com forward slash DP I believe that's visible on screen at all times yeah and there's also a link in the description so there you go yep and everyone else that donated uh, we are working this month to get everyone the perks that that they donated for Mm -hmm. so that'll be coming around really soon here yep before we move on, you want to take a break or? Uh, it's up to you. Yeah, I think so. All right, we're going to take a brief break. We'll be right back after these messages from our sponsor. Which is nobody. <laughs> we don't have a sponsor. We'll be right back. Bye-bye.
of heat stroke. I did. We're back. Guess who's back? We're going to go ahead and move along Back here. again. <laughs> Trump okay. peasants are back. So, TJ, if you don't believe in the supernatural, TJ this is going to change TJ. your mind forever. Really? Yes. I'm ready. This guy knows how to make clouds disappear, and he's going to show you how he does it. Clowns or clouds? Clouds. Clowns, not so much. Clouds, though. I'd rather make clowns disappear <laughs> than clouds. A clouds never really done anything to me. Clowns have done things to you? Well, I don't know. A lot of people are scared of clowns. Are you scared of them? You know, and there is ICP to think of. So What have they done to you? Well, they've subjected all of us to their music. And that, you know, that's pretty egregious for the most part. Get some hate mail from Juggalos. Making a cloud disappear. Everything will be misspelled. <laughs> No fucking punctuation, or way too much. Hey, this is T. Chase recording this Kay. in September 2014. In September 2014. Right. Yeah, you said that already. I think we only what need to date try once. To do is make a cloud see, disappear. Uh, make a cloud disappear. <laughs> Which see one? This cloud in the center. All right. Large cloud. I'm going to try to make this cloud disappear by psychic powers. By powers. my psychokinesis powers. As I do this, I have to chant to make it de disappear. So I'll go. I'm going to try to make this cloud disappear. Clear 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 disappear. I'm going to try to make this cloud disappear by psychic. Powers. I know you've already said that. Make it disappear. It's not working yet. The funny thing is, is that, yeah, um, if you stare at any one cloud long enough, it probably will eventually disappear. Because that's what clouds do. Cloud... Cleed disappear. 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 Cleed vanish blue sky. Cleed disappear. Cleed disappear. Cleed disappear. Cleed disappear. Cleed. He's getting winded there. Yeah, yeah. He's <laughs> wow. Peer, clee disappear. Clee disappear. Blue sky, clee disappear. Clee. <laughs> this is almost as good as the Why Be an Atheist song. This actually, you know, it's funny because his chant, his telekinetic chants are actually more melodic, more rhythmic. than most of that guy's songs. Yeah. Clee disappear. Clee disappear. Clee disappear, clee disappear, clee disappear, clee disappear, blue sky, clee. This is like, you know, I'm going to throw this baseball up in the air and then make it fall to the ground <laughs> by using my telekinetic powers. This is like, you know, you know what this is really like is when you like sit there and you're like you think you say you could change the light with your mind or something. See, it's red, but I'm going to make it green. Oh, turn green, turn green, turn green. It's green, look, see, powers. Disappear. Cleed disappear. Cleed disappear. I want it to work now. Cleed disappear. Cleed disappear. Cleed disappear. Cleed disappear. Cleed disappear. Cleed disappear. Cloud kind of looks like a T Rex. Yeah. Oh, he did that. He made that. He made it do that. He made the T Rex. Yes. It's just kind of though. Cloud disappear. Cloud disappear. Cloud disappear. Cloud. Disappear, disappear, disappear. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. <laughs> so eventually the cloud does disappear. 
Let's it, see that. Okay. When does that happen? <laughs> like 15 minutes in. Let's wow. See. I think. Oh, I see. You disappear. Clear. Clear disappear. Clear. It is. It's lost a lot of its consistency. I, for one, am convinced. That's what I'm saying. This is the evidence right here. Holy shit. <clears throat> Finally. Proof. Proof of psychic powers. Can he do anything else other than make clouds disappear? Uh, I haven't seen any of his other videos, but that's all he does in this video. Let's see what he says at the end here. <laughs> okay, it's gone. It's Clear gone enough. Disappear, you notice how all the other clouds vanish. around it are gone Clear too. Disappear, yeah. Clear vanish. Clear disappear, Clear vanish. <laughs> Clear disappear, Clear vanish. Clear, Clear vanish. Clear disappear. Clear disappear, Clear vanish. Clear disappear. Here. All right, Clear it's gone enough. Come on. Clear disappear. Clear dis Stop it here. That this cloud hasn't disappeared, but it's definitely small. <laughs> He's like, all right, I'm going to stop now. I'm tired. But it didn't disappear, but it's smaller for sure. It didn't disappear, but it's smaller. If I was over here for another half hour or so, it'd be gone. <laughs> Good job, buddy. You did that. Do you want to see uh, Megan Fox at the zoo? No, okay. not particularly. All right. Then we'll move on. Here's a um, here's a news story. Uh, a pastor uh, married a horse. Good. Finally. Mississippi pastor wasn't alone. Today or he didn't. When he stood outside. He didn't marry the horse, but he dressed the horse in a wedding dress, basically saying you could marry your well, horse. Well, I'm not going to judge him for his fetishes. At the federal courthouse to protest same-sex marriage, but he wasn't with another person either. Instead, he brought along his horse to help get a point across. News Channel 12's Danielle Vittable speaks with the pastor and people who are against his message. I'm just want to send a message saying, you know, how far are we going to take this thing? It's not something. How far are we going to take this thing? every day a horse in a wedding dress actually that is something i see every day and i fucking uh feel offended that you are trying to dictate to me what i do and don't see on a daily basis right like it's really disgusting it's kind of a weird argument that they use you know you could marry another person eventually you'll marry an animal it's yeah like, it's um you might like to eat food but eventually you might want to eat shit <laughs> or poison or something like that <laughs> Food is the path to wrongness, motherfucker. By the federal courthouse, nonetheless. I, I thought it laughable, um, and I, I believe he was going for a ridiculous protest, and he certainly got one. Reverend Edward James of Birth the Chapel Missionary Baptist Church dressed his horse Charlotte in a makeshift wedding dress to protest same-sex marriage. The horse is um, to show the, uh, the ridiculous idea of a man, two men getting married. I think it actually shows the ridiculous idea of a man getting married to a horse. Which is ridiculous. Right. I don't understand the connection between that and gay marriage. He's not the first uh, person of the faith community to uh, bring up the specter of bestiality or plural marriage or any other unnatural argument. And he won't be the last. James says after a federal decision was made in November to ben, lift the ban. would you marry that horse? It is quite attractive. It is. I mean, you know, I never really thought about marrying a horse before until this guy dressed one in a wedding gown. Yep. It's quite now, beautiful. Now that I see it, I'm kind of like, damn, what have I been missing? Yeah. So he kind of achieved the opposite of what he was trying to achieve here. Yeah, because I'm, you know, this actually, it, it, he tried to do it as a protest against gay marriage, but I think it's actually a rally. I think it's actually a rally for horse marriage. <laughs> I think that that's what he's hoping in the back of his mind, like, please legalize horse marriage. Please legalize horse marriage. Come on. Yeah, and then we'll move from other mammals to completely other types of animals like reptiles and birds and shit like that. Yeah. Fish. Marry a bird. Yep. This is my wife. She's a goldfish. <laughs> and then we can move on to plants and then non-living things like I could I could buy a uh, fuck my big black ass 
and marry, and marry it. it. You should be able to legally marry a fucking sex toy. <laughs> yeah. In sex marriage in the state, he's hoping Judge Carlton Reeves will change his mind. I'm a Mississippian, and, and I'm, I'm praying and hoping that we will remain a state not only recognize uh, marriage as uh, between a man and a woman. The argument is not about uh, sin or, or, or religious belief or, or what the church says about marriage equality. It is strictly about uh, benefits, rights, protections extended by government, uh, not by the church. The pastor stood outside for Shut morning. up, yep. damn commie. Two hours suck some more dick. Communists. I've had 100% support so far. Thumbs uh, up. No, you uh, haven't. 100% support. You have not had 100% support. Yeah, I mean, just the other guy in the video doesn't support you. Right, so that alone. And I'm watching this, and I don't support you. So <laughs> you have not had 100% support. I've had 100% support. No idea ever has had 100% support. You couldn't even get everyone to agree that the fucking sky is blue. Come on. Tooting on the horns. Uh, I've even had a couple of come out and give me a hug and hug the horse. I think the good reverend should probably uh, focus on what Marry he can the do horse. To, to the needs of the LGBT community and not get involved with um, hot button interests like marriage equality right now. Reporting in Hines County, Daniela Vittable, WJTV News Channel 12. Wow. I'm going to marry a horse. Here's here, it, You know those uh, vending machines? They're like gumball machines, but they have like cheap ass toys in them. Yes. Uh, this kid got something kind of interesting out of one that I, I'd never seen. Is it a dildo? No, but you'll see. It's a giant dildo. That would be hilarious if it was. We bought four things and three of them are like little dinosaurs or something. And then on the fourth one, so happened this fell out. What fell out was wow. this, a plastic gold ring with Nazi markings. Sweet. Leona Kelly tells me she's always given her son a quarter to buy something Who is the vending machine when they... Who mass manufactured Nazi rings <laughs> and put them in fucking... What? Yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. Neat. They go shopping. Now she's thinking twice. You don't want to know what <laughs> my reaction was. I just started like yelling at the store people like what? It's not their fault. Why would you yell at the store yeah, people? Yeah, yell seriously? at the store people because they're like they knew what was in there or something. No, there's probably some company that owns the machines there that refills them. I don't right. It's not the 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 people from the store are not sitting there like, yeah. yeah. Yell at the people is from the this, store. You know, I'm like, why is this here? Kelly says, thankfully, her four-year-old son doesn't know what a swastika is yet. I went to the family dollar in North Tulsa where the ring was bought. Store management would not go on camera and told me they do not stock the vending machine. No and shit. And had problems with the vendor in the past. <laughs> well, you, shouldn't, you really shouldn't say you've had problems with the vendor in the past. Because right. Because that begs the question, why are you still using them? You should really just say, like, this vendor's always been good in the past. We have no idea how this happened. <laughs> but whatever. Family Dollar allowed me get to better PR the people. Get the family Dollar contact information. There, I found no company name, but a license with the Oklahoma Tax Commission with a Lawton, Oklahoma phone number. I was calling about the vending machine in North Tulsa. Uh, yes, I've been asked to say no comment. Before the man hung up, I've been asked to say uh, no comment. Seriously, like, I mean, like, why no comment? Why not just like come up with some explanation for why it's there, even if you don't know, just like make some shit up there was a mix up uh mix know. up at the factory <laughs> the, the the nazi ring factory <laughs> <laughs> who the fuck is ma who the fuck is making that and for what purpose he told me the rings would be removed in a couple of days but kelly says it's too late it was made you know just like the other rings that they make in there you can bend it up shove it in here and so it was made for a vending machine hold on shove it in where <laughs> shove it in where I, I, I don't understand what she meant by that. But She's doing things with it. Right. You can bend it up, <laughs> shove it in here. <laughs> I just don't understand why. She's about to walk in that house, pull off her panties and squat and like shit out like 50 of those rings. <laughs> what episode of Drunken Peasants would be complete without a police brutality story? I don't know. All right. Maybe this this one? is the latest no, video to once again shine a light on what attorneys call excessive force by Baltimore police. You would dumb you know that? The whole thing's heart-wrenching, but 
it's just sort of I'm sure the police really acted just, responsibly and that there's nothing to this because cops are always right depicts their attitude. The video shot in March, just over two minutes long. The woman, 36-year-old Kianga Mwamba, is recording the arrest Mwamba. of a man on the street. You saw the so she was recording the police arresting some dude. Right. Me, I can't record on my phone? Okay. Police tell her she can record, but yell for her to park. All right, I'll park. I'll park. I'll park. I'll park. I'll park, and I hear y'all saying this. I'm ready to pull it over. How can I pull my car over right here and the police right here? Despite her explanation, attorneys say their client is snatched out of the car. You pull the car over. Actually, you get out of the car. Yeah, yeah, they're, and they're, the reason they give her is total bullshit. What is the reason? They're saying she... But first, they told her, yeah, you can record, but you have to pull over. So she gets in her car, tries to pull over, but they're all standing around her. So when she tries to move her car, then they say, well, you just tried to run over one of us. Okay. The woman, the daughter of a Capitol Police officer, is tasered twice. Oh my god. She's the daughter of a police officer. It's fucking hilarious. <laughs> but that dude was pissed. Yes. You would dumb. You would dumb. You know that? In a statement to WJZ, police officials say, quote, during the arrest, language is used that is both offensive and unacceptable. The Baltimore Police Department expects and demands that officers treat every uh, citizen. <laughs> Hold on now. Well, I mean, like, first of all, I mean, like, the language they're using is really, like, the lowest of the problems that's happening right here. So, I mean, like, whatever. But then this, like, line of bullshit, like, we demand that officers treat every citizen with respect regardless of the situation. Like, bull fucking shit. Yeah. You do not. Right. Especially That is a lie. Especially when they happen to be black normally. Right. But I mean like even if you're white, like there was some seventy three year old man, I don't know if you saw this video. No. Seventy three year old man, his fucking plate was expired. He got out and gave the cop a little lip, so the cop fucking starts tackling him to the ground and tasing him and shit. Seventy <laughs> three year old white dude. <clears throat> not that it matters. No. But you know what I'm saying. Right. It's like these cops are just assholes with respect regardless of the situation the woman is arrested and charged with using her vehicle to strike an officer those uh, charges have since been dropped well no shit they're bullshit right that was the reason they came up with to fuck with the lady who was filming <laughs> because they couldn't they can't charge her with a crime for filming so they have to make up some she was trying to hurt us with her car it's like no she clearly was not that is a lie you're just outright lying you scum fucks. In this statement of probable cause, the officer says the woman accelerated towards another officer and he yelled no, for didn't. her to stop. That's why probable, we saw the video. You're lying. That's why probable cause is such bullshit. It is like they could say, well, I smelled weed on them. It's like you can't prove that that they did or didn't smell anything. You know, it's probable cause is is bullshit. It's bullshit, folks. It's bullshit, and it's bad for you. But attorneys say the video and this probable cause statement do not match up. Yeah. I have no reason to believe anything that he wrote was correct. The attorneys say their client was left with cuts, bruises, and a severe sprain, but it's the emotional scars that are the hardest to heal. The woman's attorneys tell WJZ the police actually deleted the video from her cell phone, but her tech-savvy teenager found it in her iCloud account. Wow. See, yeah, th see, they try to delete shit. I love the tampering no. with evidence. That is a fucking crime. <laughs> but they won't get in trouble. They delete thing. They we deleted this evidence against what we're saying, and yet they're not going to get in trouble for even that. They're just going to be like, oh, well, the officers just did what they're supposed to do. We have also heard from the woman's attorney now, and he tells us that he's not aware of any discipline against the Baltimore police officers involved. And we've <gasps> also just heard this hour I'm shocked. from that affiliate reporter you just saw, Roche uh, Rochelle Ritchie, who says that the officers are still on the job as Good. of this time. Thank uh, God they're the still out there protecting us right. from ourselves. I'm glad they're there. Me too lawyer was told that the case has been referred to the state attorney's office. Mwamba. Seven million dollar lawsuit. I don't know about that. Yeah, she probably won't get, she probably won't even get like a quarter of that. No. She, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. 
All right. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, she probably does have some sort of civil suit for the injuries. And, right. You know, if she missed work. I don't know if I know $7 million. Right, right. But what's more important is where, where are the criminal charges? Why aren't police held to a standard where if they commit a crime, just because they're on the job, they're absolved from that? You know, it, assault is, is bad enough, but also tampering with evidence. Ben, That's a crime. Ben, I've heard some communist statements in my time, but that was the most communist of them all. <laughs> you obviously hate America and want it destroyed. I do. I do. Okay, so um, when uh, when they came out with the CIA enhanced interrogation report, mm -hmm. one of the forms of enhanced interrogation they were talking about was rectal rehydration. You ever Woo. heard of that? Yep. Uh, here's a, a general it's one of my top fetishes. saying saying that it's necessary it's all to good. use. Yeah. First of all, your reaction to the press conference, what do you think? I think it's a very good speech. As Evan points out, John had a thread of fairly narrow space there because he is in government. But frankly, the reactions of Senator Feinstein, Senator Wyden, and Senator Udall yesterday, even before he heard the speech, tell me there's an awful lot to like in the speech. What do you mean by that? I mean they oppose the speech. They said that John was misleading and lying again. Right. Okay. Okay. So he thinks the speech is good because Democrats don't like it. That's yeah. what it seems like he's saying. If, if Democrats don't like something, it must be good. I know John's telling the truth. And so although I would have changed a few words, I may have added a few thoughts. Fundamentally, John said we got valuable information from this program and we did not intend to mislead Congress about it. I'll pocket that. Do you know that... Let's first of all let, let's uh, let's let's differentiate if we can for the sake of this conversation between the abuses, the things that were not the sent, unauthorized, the activities. unauthorized such right. as the rectal rehydration. No, stop. Go, okay, all right. That was a medical procedure that was done because of detainee health. That the people responsible there for the health of these detainees saw that they were becoming dehydrated. They had limited options in which to go do this. Uh, like giving them water. Yeah, to I was drink? about to say, or, like, or an IV. Are they ref like? Yeah, I mean, like, because I I went to I went to the hospital once and I was dehydrated and they gave me an IV. They shoved nothing up my ass. <laughs> well, they should have been. They really should have. <laughs> yeah, I'm missing out apparently. <laughs> I need to go to Guantanamo to get my health care. No, don't even fuck with that. All you need to do is go in your backyard and just shove a garden hose up your ass and turn it on, and you know you'll be good. It was intravenous with needles, which would be dangerous with a non-cooperative detainee. It was through the Couldn't nasal passage. Couldn't you just like strap them down? Hummus and pine nuts and... Jake, I'm not a doctor and neither are you, but what I am told... And neither, <laughs> neither were the people administering this. Hummus and pine nuts. What? That's what they were shoving up people's asses. Hummus and pine nuts and shit. So yeah. like Middle Eastern food? I guess. Yeah. <laughs> what? That's why they called it... Re that's why a bunch of people called it rectal feeding. <laughs> and I've, I've, this is actually the first time I've heard rectal rehydration. I've always heard it uh, described as rectal feeding. What like, the fuck? Yeah, that's what I was doing in my banana video. I was just rectal feeding. You know, you should have you should have dipped the banana in hummus. Apparently, I, well, you know, I'm not Middle Eastern. <laughs> <laughs> what are you, you? You're like part Scottish or something? It should be haggis then, or something like that. Well, that you know, I don't like haggis. <laughs> It's gross. There's like guts in there. Yeah, there are. It's a very strange dish. Is, this is one of the ways that the body is rehydrated. These were medical procedures. And to give you a sense. You're really defending rectal rehydration. I, <laughs> Even the reporter's like, To uh, give you a sense as to how this on. report was put together. This activity, which was done five times. In each time for the health of the detainee, not part of the interrogation program, not designed to soften him up for any questioning. The committee. Yeah, it's not. The Democrats on the committee. Have Most used, people enjoy having hummus and pine nuts shoved up their ass. That's a medical procedure. It's like a medical procedure in the same way that like, like leeches are a medical procedure. Like bloodletting. That's a medical procedure. Yeah. Don't you know that? <laughs> Hummus. Hummus is too delicious to shove up your ass, honestly. I don't know. Nah, man. You just, you don't know. I'm still, I'm still going for the haggis. 
You don't understand one what it's like. unwarranted comment in one email mm -hmm. to justify the story that you have now bought hook, line, and sinker that we use this to abuse other human beings. Well, without question, the CIA has acknowledged abuses, right? Things they that you... Do, but you, you and, and, really, I'm talking about re rectal rehydration. The report says that it was unnecessary and then it was forced. And no, you're disputing the report, that. the report... I love how this guy will just defend everything they've done. He won't concede on <laughs> one point here. No, no. I mean, like, you know, it's perfectly natural what we did. It I was, like it when the reporter was, was like, good. It was right. Hummus and pine nuts for medical. He's like, well, I'm not a doctor. <laughs> I just know everything they did was right. <laughs> wow. Referring to one email with one very bad taste comment has used that email to make this judgment. Now, don't you think they should have talked to someone? What did you mean by this? Did everyone else around in Look, making this? I'm going to you the point right now that, <laughs> okay, that, 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 that the committee should. Wow, he's getting snarky now. You notice that? Yeah. It's like, how dare you question this? <laughs> have interviewed witnesses. Well, I mean, you know, when you're a general in the military, you're used to everyone kissing your ass and saying that you're right about everything. Man, if this is the caliber of people we have as generals, no wonder we fucking can't win a war. Yeah, it says his name's General Hayden. He's probably retired. He looks pretty old. But. Yeah. Someone needs to take a golf club to his nuts. <laughs> right. A hundred percent, I agree with you. And let's even say that it'd be better if this report were a bipartisan report uh, and the entire committee signed off on it. I, I agree with all of that. I, I, I'm, I'm a little dumbfounded that you're saying that rectal rehydration, which I've never heard of, and there is, for, you know, when they force feed prisoners in Guantanamo, I can understand that's being done in the name of keeping those prisoners alive because there's no other way to keep them alive. I've never heard of and, 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 it and, being done rectally, and it, the report seems to make it clear it's being, it's, it's a method of interrogation. No, it wasn't a method of interrogation. And why do you presume auto automatically without a Gee, you don't sound defensive at all with your tone of voice <laughs> and your shaking of your head. Why do you presume that every time we shove food up a person's ass, we're trying to fuck with them? <laughs> you know, can't you just admit that we did it for their own benefit? Any further evidence, okay? That we what further evidence is needed? You shove food up people's asses. I mean, like, what? You, you... It's not like they were sitting there like, yes, please, shove the food up my ass. It's like no one is saying that to you. That is not something that most people are asking for. Not most people. Most people. Not most people. Uh, uh, shit. It's, oh, my God. Yes, the irony. Why? Why is this happening? <sighs> oh my god okay <laughs> but it's just a noble one being done at guantanamo <laughs> it is described as a method of torture Des descri in this, in, described in the, by whom in the senate report they an objective observer i don't even are you they talk to witnesses let's uh, will he agree to have sh food shoved up his ass to show us how you know it's the health it, benefits it's no big deal <clears throat> please no. yeah i want to do it <clears throat> we're coming full circle jake we we have already agreed that they should have they should have talked to witnesses you say they should have already always talked to I'm witnesses just, just, and now you're accepting their conclusion you stick a banana up your butt <laughs> That was different, Ben. Why'd you stick a banana up your butt? That was different. I like it uh, when, when G-Man asked you that. That was consensual. <laughs> when G-Man asked you that, he, he was in no way prepared for the answer that you gave him. You're like, for sexual pleasure. <laughs> and he was just kind of like... <laughs> 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 Does this stimulate my prostate? Yep. Um, I don't know. It's pretty much the reason anyone sticks anything up their butt. Right. But not these people. No. That was, and it was not done for their health either. <laughs> That's bullshit. All right, so now we're going to move into q and I don't know how much time we have for Q&A, but uh, probably got a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. We, we don't have very many this time. Usually we have like dozens of questions. We only <laughs> got like 10 or 12 this time. Sweet. So, yep, here we go. q and oh, oh, holy hell. Hello there, drunken peasants. It's Santa Egghead. Yeah. 
I want to know what Santa is the worst good. Christmas present you have ever gotten. All right, thanks, guys. Bye. Um, I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm, not, I'm I know. not like I'm not like one of these people that's like. I mean, someone would have to give me an exceptionally bad gift for me to be like, I'm gonna remember that and just fucking like I don't know, probably like socks or something. Yeah, I mean, there's that kind of shit. I mean. I don't even Ben. I remember uh when um when the Batman the, the first Tim Burton Batman movie came out. Uh. You know, Batman was huge and I was I was pretty young at the time, probably I don't know, probably like seven years old or so. And uh <clears throat> I wanted pretty much anything that pertained to Batman. Pretty much anything <laughs> okay. that pertained to Batman. That's a very interesting uh, choice of words and, just now. And an older fami- family member got me a VHS tape of <laughs> when Adam West did like the Batman Scooby-Doo cameo. Uh-huh. And that was pretty bad. Yeah, you, you didn't like the Scooby-Doo. No. <laughs> didn't like the cameo ones. No. Well, I, I mean like, no, not really. Yeah, they were pretty bad. Yeah, Scooby Doo in general, I think, is not a very good cartoon. But. No, but how can you make it worse? Put John Cena in it. Dun 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 dun. And they did do that. I haven't seen that. I don't ever plan to. <clears throat> Although maybe we could review it for an episode of Drunken Peasants sometime. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that'd probably be a good thing to review. Like, <laughs> um, I don't know. Yeah, pro- we'll probably. see. That's that's an off show discussion. <laughs> they should be using that at Guantanamo. Hey, what's up, drunken peasants? I got some quick questions for you guys. My first one is, if you could change the human anatomy in any way you see fit, what changes would you make? And they don't have to be practical changes either. Just literally anything you want. You get to play God. I could. The volume in this question is really low, so I don't know how well they heard it. Uh, we'll basically ask if we could change anything in human anatomy, what would we change? Um, I don't know. Probably be like 20 feet taller. Should be a giant. I want two penises, one on each hip. One on each hip. So yeah. You go back so and I'm forth. Having sex, it's like I'm dancing. Let's see here. Oh yeah, he asked a question about. Oh, I'll 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 play it, even though we can hardly hear it. See TJ doing some weird stuff with genitals. I'm not even going to imagine what he would do. <coughs> um, my second question. I just wanted to be taller. Ben, yeah, that's funny because I did the weird thing with genitals. Yeah. <laughs> I know you have stretched. Don't ears, prejudge, motherfucker. How long have you been stretching them? Uh, what, what made you want to get them stretched, and what size are you at right now? Uh, I don't even have like a real size. My plugs are not a. It, I, I don't even know what what size they are. I haven't. I have not got made my ears bigger in. Almost a decade now. Um, and also, do you guys have any specific body modifications or tattoos or art styles that you find attractive on certain people or that you've always been drawn to? I like tattoos in general. I Man, like they're good. Yeah, I like sleeve tattoos and I like uh, septum rings and I and I do like stretched ears too. Yeah, I think so. gauges look stupid. Yeah, I know. I hate them. And I I, I just. They're beautiful. I always want to fucking hook and just be like, eh, but I can't. That would make you an asshole. I know, but I still want to. Let's move on. What's up, John Cousins? I got two quick questions for you. First off, it's about YouTube. What do you guys think about the site? What do you think about the direction it's taking? Recently, I got a strike on my channel and five of my videos removed. For them being inappropriate when all they were was skateboarding videos. Well, and skateboarding's inappropriate, buddy. Yeah, should know better. Should fucking know better. I hope the police beat you down. I had a similar problem with the Drunken Peasants channel with the thumbnail issue, and that being complete bullshit as well. So, my uh, question is, what are your thoughts about the site? And uh, especially, how do you think Google's changed YouTube? Because I've been on the site since pre-Google, and I really think it's took a negative turn since they took it over. I want to mention the one improvement that they made, and that was allowing comments to be longer. Yeah, that is better. 
I hate when YouTube unnecessarily changes their layout for no reason, just to make it like we sh we moved shit around so you don't know where anything is anymore. But other than that, we haven't really changed anything. It's like, well, thanks YouTube, thanks for the annoying illusion of progress, you fucking assholes. Um, I've been on YouTube before the Google days too, and honestly, I could say that YouTube has pretty much always been douchey. I mean, they've always been kind of assholes as long as I can remember. I've always had to fight an uphill battle against them. So um, it's really nothing new. Yeah, and it, there seems to be kind of... I mean, at one point, I mean, they were worse at one point because I remember for a while I had to bleep out my videos because YouTube was like, we're family friendly and we're going to... Now they let little girls curse in videos. I mean, right. You know? But for a while, YouTube was like, no profanity. So I had to bleep out curse words in my videos for like probably a year or two. They're even okay with nudity if certain people do it. Right, yeah. Like uh, when, when Robin Thicke came out with the Blurred Lines video, there's tits all over in that video. And, and that's okay. Uh, yeah. That's all right. Yeah. That's all good. So is, they're very selective about who they crack down on and who they don't crack down yeah, on. Yeah, YouTube has very interesting selective morality. But that's always been the case with them. Their policies pretty much mean nothing because it's just it's all open to their interpretation and it's all at their discretion. So basically their terms of use mean whatever they want them to mean at any given day and they can apply it however they fucking want. It's not like there's actually any consistency to their standards. So yeah, YouTube sucks. <laughs> but it's how we make our living, so fuck you. All right. I think you said something else. We'll see. Eh. My second question is mm. to your opinion of Beavis and Butthead. It's funny. Yeah, Next question. We like it. <laughs> the end. Next. Hey, drunken peasants. Ben, TJ, Scotty, if you're there. I like how he knows that Scotty may not be here. Yeah. Scotty, the only reason Sc Scotty could even be on, Scotty could be on this show, the only reason he's not is because his fucking girlfriend flew in from Canada. And he's like, gotta spend time with my girlfriend. Pussy. <laughs> I'm not saying anything. Say something, Ben. No. Say no, something. Fuck that. I'm Disparage going. Scotty, man. Nope. Any guests who's there? How's it going? No guests. I have two questions for you guys. First question, what's your favorite Ridley Scott movie? Um, I would say Alien. Yeah, I would say Alien. I would say Aliens. Or a would you say Alien or Aliens? I think I don't think he did Aliens. Didn't I think he, he, I thought he did. No, aliens. no, no. No, that was James Cameron. Yes. right. That was yeah. actually James Cameron. Uh, so no, not Alien. Probably um, the director's cut of Kingdom of Heaven. Not the not the theatrical release because that one sucked. But the director's cut that actually makes sense is pretty good. And I actually kind of view it as a comedy. <laughs> Second question: What do you think of the movie Red State? Thank you, and smoke pan never died. I never saw it. Yeah, I've never seen it. Is that a Kevin Smith movie? Yeah, it's like a, but it's like a thriller, isn't it's like it? Like a kind of like a psychological horror. Hmm. Let's see. Hey, everyone at the Drunken Peasants podcast. Did this guy make a blanket for it? What is what is uh, he in right now? Is I think he's on, on the bottom bunk of a bunk bed. Okay, because I see railings. Oh above. yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, I just have two questions, real short. Um, one, what do you guys think uh, life would be like in reality if there was a human that was able to uh, gain superpowers um, and the government wasn't able to contain a person once they found out because they were really powerful? Like well, in like Akira or something? I mean, it depends on the character of that person, but I would say, you know, the whole absolute power corrupts absolutely thing. Yeah. Um, more than likely, that person would just do whatever the fuck they want. It's like, yeah, I'm coming to blow up your town and then rape everybody. Yep. So prepare for that, I guess. <laughs> um, do you think it would be good or bad for society to have a person who could literally kill the whole planet? Probably bad. But Yeah, probably. Um, <laughs> it was up to him to choose. I would say at that point, you know, if someone created a religion worshiping that person, it would be. Yeah, it would actually be kind of like true, you know. <laughs> yeah. There's a god for you. Yeah. You want one. Yep. See how much you actually like it, motherfuckers. Right. <laughs> hey, TJ. Um, 
I'm gonna try to make this kind of short, but um, you've already failed. I've been reading a lot of <laughs> Nietzsche lately, uh -huh. and uh, there we go. And I've been realizing how <coughs> like how society really is. I mean, it's a lot of just. Society, man. Things. Fucking now, society. It's kind of surprising because you'd think we'd be kind of above that, but we really aren't. And um, I was wondering, how do you deal with being like completely intellectually alone? In society, man. It's like <laughs> fucking, you know, you read some Nietzsche and it's like, you know how like society is, man. It's like, wow. How do you deal with like being <laughs> like, totally intellectually alone society Nietzsche are you gonna answer it no no really you want me to move on to the next yeah. one yeah <laughs> you're not gonna answer but it was for you no I'm not gonna answer it it's silly <laughs> <laughs> it's silly I don't know what to fucking tell you hi there guys uh, this is my second question for you so, uh, in his book, uh, The Demon Haunted World, uh, Carl Sagan says the following thing. It's in chapter... I don't know what chapter. Oh, whatever. So, he says, And yet, the chief deficiency I see in the skeptical movement is in its polarization. Us versus them. The sense that we have a monopoly on the truth. That those other people who believe in all these stupid doctrines are morons. That if you're sensible, you'll listen to us. And if, you're, and if not, you're beyond redemption. This is unconstructive. It does not get the message across. It condemns the skeptics to permanent minority status. Whereas a compassionate approach that from the beginning acknowledges the human roots of pseudoscience and superstition might be much more widely accepted. So I'd like to know you guys' opinions on this passage because... You I know, think um, I think the fact that we've seen atheism grow far more with more boisterous voices like Christopher Hitchens and Richard Dawkins... Um, kind of shows me that Sagan was wrong when he said that, that it's not always constructive. I mean, like, it's not always constructive to reach out an olive branch to a group of people that are not willing to accept it. Sometimes it really is better to just get in their face and say, you're a fucking idiot. And, you know, that's exactly what Christopher Hitchens did. That's exactly what Richard Dawkins does. Um, that's exactly what Sam Harris did. All the popular new atheist <laughs> books that came out and really made this tremendous impact and really elevated the discussion and put religious people on the defensive for probably the first time in American history. Um, I think that was because we took a, a less um, conciliatory attitude. So I don't think Sagan is correct. All right. We're going to move on. The, the reason we're rushing through this is because uh, YouTube has scheduled maintenance um, in about 15 minutes and... Uh, some problems could occur if we don't end the stream before then. Yeah. So we're just trying to work through this here. We got four more questions. Four more. Um, hi, guys. You're a liar. One question. It's specifically for Ben, but Boo. TJ and Boba the Funny Man can answer too. He called Scotty Bobo, Bobo the, the Funny, funny man. man. Good thing Scotty's not here. He'd probably be like, <laughs> fuck this guy. Yeah, I think... Uh, I don't know. Cena Scotty probably doesn't like that either. Fuck it! Fuck it! Um, it's about beer. A few podcasts ago, I have came to the discovery that Ben likes beer. Um, Belgium beer, to be specific. And I'm like, hey, I'm from Belgium. I'm in Belgium right now. Oh, God. Remind me never to go there again. You get to meet this guy if no. you go to Belgium. Man. No. This guy wants to suck your fucking dick, dude. You know what's funny? Like one of the main tourist attractions in Brussels is this guy. No, it's it's the little statue of the boy pissing, the mannequin piss. Yeah, well, if that's what you're into, I guess. <laughs> it's all fucking Belgium. Um, so my question to you is, what Belgian beer do you like the most? Maas, um, Schubelich, still Artois. Okay, like, I'm afraid to say any of the names of the beer because I know I'm going to say them wrong. I do like Chimay a lot, but I like it all pretty much. I like uh, Golden Drock a lot. That's that's good stuff. And Pirate. That's also good as well. You said all that wrong, Ben. You're stupid. 
probably did. You're fucking stupid, man. <clears throat> so dumb. You're fucking stupid. you fucking stupid. Next. All right. Next. Hello, drunken peasants. Uh, cut your show last Monday. My Glad little bro. Okay, okay. This is the guy that wore the fucking John Cena shirt the one time that he had the question. This dude's a troll. And he's a brony. Yeah. You think he's a troll? Well. <clears throat> or is he a Cena brony? I think he was trolling when he wore the Cena shirt. I don't think he's trolling about the My Little Pony stuff. A friend of mine, uh, a friend of mine sent me an ad. Some guy was selling like a My Little Pony that he had like constructed a fuck hole into. And there was actually people bidding on it. How much is it? <laughs> <laughs> Had someone on who was an open brony. I think uh, that guy was the first, though I wish he hadn't been a, such a complete goofball. And the second guy was... Most bronies are very bad, serious people. Worse. Anyway, my question for you guys is uh, what form of uh, entertainment that you expect... You know, if you turn those around, you'd see fuck holes in the back of all them, too. <laughs> terrible did you guys most uh enjoy you know you can probably guess what my answer to that question is and uh what form of entertainment did you guys have that you most expected to be fantastic was the biggest disappointment uh thank you hmm. um probably something that everyone pretty much hates or at least should is the resident evil movies but i kind of enjoy them as a guilty pleasure Something I thought was going to be good that sucked. Probably the Star Wars prequels is the most obvious example of that. When I was a kid, I was really looking forward, and then they were garbage. I, I don't know if I thought the new Star Trek movies were going to be good, but I was hopeful that they would be. So you're going with the Star Trek movies? Yeah. 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 Anything that you enjoy that is that most people think is shit? Probably wrestling. Yeah, that's true. Wrestling. I mean, yeah. like... I don't. I would say probably the majority of people don't like wrestling, but there's <laughs> there is like a huge audience, sure, for it. But yeah, probably wrestling. All right, next one. John Cena. Hello, drunken peasants. This is a question for TJ, and uh, I know in the past TJ was a um, Taco. libertarian, and now he is uh, not. I'm just wondering what you think of libertarianism now, TJ. You're never gonna live it down. Never gonna live it down. What do I think of libertarianism? I don't know. I mean, uh, like when it comes to certain social issues, I think libertarians are pretty on the spot. Uh, you know, I think it's personal freedom is a good thing. I think that it's always a good idea to champion people's rights to self-determine and make their own choices and have their own sensibilities and not necessarily impose some uh, standard of behavior on them but when it comes to the economic theories of libertarianism I think they're pretty shitty um, when it comes to the way that libertarians you know when it comes to like their views on things like the justice system or how the infrastructure of society is supposed to advance or how we're supposed to protect the environment uh, things like that their philosophy really falters for me and it would be very difficult to explain why with any brevity but it basically boils down to this notion they have that the free market alone can handle all these problems on its own and you know, there's there's a joke that I kind of am fond of. It's one of the light bulb jokes. It's like, uh, how many libertarians does it take to change a light bulb? None. The free market will take care of it. Right. That's pretty much. Yeah, the market just magically fixes all the problems that we have. Right. I mean, you know, there are place, there are areas where the free market will address needs, and that's undeniable. But there are certain issues that are either they require um, more planning, like markets are always based on let's make money, you know, now there's not a lot of long term strategy. Um, so like if people want like I want better medical care, the free market is not going to be necessarily the best answer for that. Because the free market is concerned, I mean, the market is concerned with making money. It's not really concerned with 
you know, curing disease. Same thing with renewable energy. Right. You know, they're not, we're, you know, if money making is the biggest incentive, then they're going to do what's most profitable, not necessarily what's best for everybody. Right. And oil and coal are the most profitable at right. this point. So natural uh, gas. If it comes to renewable green energy kind of stuff, we're not going to, you know, the private, you know, the free market is not going to be making the big major investments in that. Um, so, yeah, just yep. stuff like that. Last question. Last question. Hey, guys, last time you're going to be seeing this thing. After eight months of trying, it still doesn't look good, so it's going. Anyways, um, what do you guys think of the Colbert Report with Obama? Um, I doubt you could show it on the show because of uh, YouTube. Yeah, we can never show anything from Comedy Central. No, via, any Viacom stuff in general, we can't show. Well, it, it's basically an automatic flag. Yes. So... You're asking for YouTube to fuck you in the ass. Yep. So did did you see the Colbert Report with Obama? Yeah. Okay. Well. I mean, I didn't actually see the interview with Obama. I saw the part where Obama took over his segment, The Word. And a lot of people were like, it's hilarious. I watched it. It wasn't even funny. But uh, I thought that it really just gives a lot of people of a more democratic or democrat persuasion to just suck his dick. Because Obama's a whole lot of talk and really he's a whole lot of nothing. Uh but more in a more general sense, what do you think of the uh, Colbert report? Uh, you know, especially with his more recent guests as a you know goodbye with Sarkeesian, and especially to me, Henry Kissinger, you know, the war criminal. Thanks. Um, well, I mean, he's a talk show. I mean, that's what he does. He has on guests to talk about stuff, right? And and guests that will attract an audience, a viewing audience, right? You know, I mean, like if Anita Sarkeesian said to us, like, I want to be on the Drunken Peasants, we'd be like, fuck yeah, come yeah. on the Drunken Peasants. Yeah, we'd have her on. You the know? thing is, is that she doesn't respond to people who would actually criticize her. Right. And we would, of course. Yeah. Um, as for, you know, Colbert, I mean, he has his I mean, obviously, he has his own agenda and perspectives and all that other stuff. I really don't watch his show. I mean, except for on maybe very brief occasions. But I think he's pretty funny. Right. Um. But I really don't have much. I don't have a strong opinion about his show one way or the other. Yeah, and it's about to end anyway. I mean, he's taken over for David Letterman, which is a way more lucrative job than what he has now. And I mean, he's not going to be playing this, you know, conservative pundit like he does now. Uh, he he will not be in character there. So I think it'll be pretty different. Yep. Anyway, I guess that's pretty much the show. Yes, we will be back on Wednesday. Hopefully, we'll have our channel back by then. Hopefully. Um, Pray for us, folks. Yeah. and, and Hold uh, your hands together and whisper for God to restore the Drunken Peasants channel. We're going to try and post this video on the other channel, too, and hope that they don't mess with us there, too, because in all honesty, they weren't going to let us uh, post ads on the other video, which we, we weren't able to do, but we didn't want to make the fans wait for it, so we just posted it anyway. We're so magnanimous. Yes. We're fucking awesome. We're awesome Suck like that. Suck our cocks. So, all right, everybody. Good night. See you Wednesday. And don't forget, rectal feeding is good.